this will be a very quick well I always say quick this will be an update video I've been coin shooting pretty much every hunt for the last two or three months and I've been barreling all the coins that I've found apart from the silver ones these ones in this video are the ones that aren't silver and the ones that I've put in the barrel and machine so it's just a quick roundup of all the coins that I've found now I haven't counted these coins before I've been putting them in the tumbler I've just done maybe five or six batches of coins I've basically separated them out and now I'm gonna film them and then count them tot up what I've got uh, and I might be quite surprised This is the spendable coins that I've found in the last two or three months. Here we go on the spendables. Starting with the highest ones, we've got pound coins. Actually, I've just realised I haven't found any two pound coins, which is a bit strange. Uh, but these are pound coins. There's 24 pound coins, 7 50 pences, 22 20 pences, 27 10 pences, 13 5 pences, 25 2 pences, 100 1 pences, including one from Jersey, and 63 half pences. And those fellas add up to a grand total of 37 pounds and 7 and a half pence. 281 spendable coins. Okay then, here's the pre-decimal coins that I've found. Got three half crowns. 8 florins, which is also known as 2 shillings, 4 shillings, 2 sixpences. Now you'll notice that the sixpences, shillings, florins and half crowns are not bright silver. That's because they're not silver, they're cupro nickel. All those ones there are post-1947. So when you get a pre-1947 coin of, from those denominations, they're 50% silver, pre-1920 they're sterling silver. So after 1947 they generally come up, or, well they always come up orangey. So if you see them being dug bright silver, just ignore that. They come out the ground looking manky, you can polish them up a little bit, but you never get them back to that really bright silver that they would be when they were first minted. In a similar way our modern 10 pences and modern 50 pences, they can lose that silvery sheen to them within six months of being outdoors and certainly when they're in the ground after a year they can come up and be absolutely knackered 23 threepenny bits 34 pennies including two irish ones 36 half pennies 16 totally blank coins which are most likely half pennies and farthings four cartwheel pennies two george the third pennies and a mixture of George III and George II half pennies, and four George II farthings. These are a few of the more unusual things that I've found. That one's a token from the 1700s. That's a one franc coin. That's a half penny with I Dowson stamped into it. I think that's a Hanover token. These ones are Charles the. First, oh, is it Charles the First or Charles the Second? I think Charles the First Borbies, which is a hammered copper coin, and that's a farthing from Queen Victoria. So, in total, that makes 154 pre decimal coins. Well, 435 coins, and that doesn't include the silver ones that I've found the silver ones you've seen me digging in previous videos. So 435, I've maybe found 12, 15, 12 and 15 silver ones, maybe there's a few more. So that's about 450 coins um, in the last two or three months. Oh my. All the pre-decimal ones, including those pretty good cartwheel pennies, and there's some nice Georgian pennies in there as well, and also a nice Georgian half pennies. I'm going to give them away. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. 
but if anybody has any suggestions then they can let me know I thought of doing it in like mixed batches having a few of the post 47 ones with a few Victorian a couple of Georgian in doing them in 20s or something I, I really don't know and then doing some sort of giveaway or competition I'm no good at things like that I really don't know but I just want to give them away I'd rather give them to people who would appreciate them than for me to have them in a bag of shame because they're not the sort of thing I really keep in my coin collection I tend to keep the silver and the extremely good copper well that's it that just shows you that the stuff is out there and not all of that has come from coin shooting sites some of it's just been when I've been out in the fields some of it's been on new sites where I didn't really know what I was gonna find even when I went way up into the hills I still managed to find 17 coins so the stuff's all over the place and if you remember my previous video I think roughly every tenth hole that I dug was a coin so if I'm personally finding one coin in every tenth hole that I dig on average based on my last video on a coin shooting site I'll leave you to do the maths on how many holes I must have dug to get 450 coins and with that maths conundrum I shall leave you thanks very much for watching